I'm a man. My nephew's eyes plead this statement even as they portray his confusion over the word's precise meaning. We are cold on the side of a mountain in January, trying to get to the bottom of some things. He wears a thin excuse for a jacket that matches his jeans and, and cap and keeps his words as sparse as the growth on this barren stretch. I walk him off the road further and further into the recesses of this mountain until it seems we are only pursuing more cold. 24 hours earlier, I was home in Atlanta teaching the history of the Civil War. Then my sister called, pleading with me to save her son's life. And now, a plane, a Greyhound, and a car ride later, I am in rural Pennsylvania, stamping my feet against the cold and walking further into the brittle brush of this mountain, trying to get to a deep, stark place with my 20-year-old namesake. When we find a clearing, we stand near a river and we begin to exchange words. He admits to hitting his girlfriend, the mother of a boy, who carries his namesake and therefore mine. His thin frame corroborates his mother's story that he has been drinking to excess and becoming increasingly erratic and violent in his behavior, sinking into a pattern that we know well from our personal history. We are all heirs to the failed experiments in manhood that stand like bitter monuments in our family history. She called me because she fears for his life and because I am the only male in my immediate family who has managed to avoid substance abuse and incarceration. She thinks this, I can share the key to that riddle with her son because this is why she named him after me. I am a man. I spoke to my nephew at that cold river about the blind alleys we have walked down, the fragile, half-hearted, incomplete brand of manhood that was birthed in this experience. I told him that we have embraced the brute's version of manhood for which the highest virtue is to instill fear in the hearts of others in order to camouflage our own. But I did not leave him with that. We also have a parallel tradition, one in which generations of black males have struggled and given life to a, a flyer version of ourselves. None of us is flawless, none without contradictions, but many of us are accomplished and have laid out a more human path for us to walk. In the midst of slavery and the attempts to destroy the black family, black men went to great lengths to preserve their familiar bonds. From Louisiana, we have the report of George Sally, an enslaved black man who disobeyed the white slaveholder and left the plantation to visit his wife. When he was arrested and thrown into prison for disobedience, he stated he would gladly do the same again if it meant seeing his wife. Another black man walked nearly 12 hours every Sunday in order to spend a few hours with his wife on a distant plantation, only to have to turn around and walk home in time to begin the next day's work. The history of the South is littered with reports of black males who, after the end of slavery, set out on foot to find the wives and children they had been sold away from. History accounts of these wanderers testifies that these men covered thousands of miles cutting paths across. I spent three hours that day in the woods speaking to my nephew about the ways in which we find ourselves trapped in a world not of our own making, acting out a script written by brutes and handed to us like leftovers fed to slaves. We hope to understand that those words, I am a man, carry weight that they obligate you to walk 12 hours for your woman and to make a point that an evil world cannot kill your capacity to love. I mean that we would rather spend 11 months in the woods than to see one of our sisters harmed. I told my nephew that I am a student and a teacher of history and that I know the obstacles that stand behind us are larger than those that stand in front of us. Bitter and painful history has led us into this situation, but the solutions we seek and the examples we need also lie in this history. So this is the task. 
to mine our souls for those jewels that will sustain us and leave the rest to pass into dust. Ah.